All right, we are on number five, last question. And um, as usual, if I have any mistakes, I'll put it in a pinned comment below. Uh, a spring of unknown spring constant K0 is attached to the ceiling. A lightweight hanger is attached to the lower end of the spring and a motion detector is placed on the floor facing upward directly under the hanger as shown in the figure above. The bottom of the hanger is one meter above the motion detector. Okay, a object, a 5, 0.5 kilogram object is placed on the hanger and allowed to come to rest in the equilibrium position. The spring is then stretched downward at D0 from equilibrium release at time t equals zero. The motion detector records the height of the bottom of the hanger as a function of time. The output of the motion detector is shown on the graph in the following page. Okay, using information given and the information to calculate the spring constant. So it's going up and down. Uh, well, what do we know about springs? I mean, there's three equations that involve spring. One is energy, one half kx squared. One is force spring constant, but this one is oscillating. So I'm going to use this equation. The period. Why? Because I can observe the period. The period is the time from there to when it starts over. So it looks like the period is 1.25 seconds. So T equals 1.25 seconds. The mass is 0 0.5 kilograms. And then you can just solve for K. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do T over two pi. I will square it. That equals M over K. And then K would equal M divided by that T over two pi squared like that, right? And so that would be 0 0.5 divided by 1.25 divided by two pi squared. And I would just calculate that out. I think I did that right. So I got uh, 12.63. Oh, let's see. The mass, I get the kilograms. Okay, so it's, yeah, this is still Newtons per meter. Or 12.6, should probably say 12.6 or so. Because uh, I just noticed this said centimeters. So I wanted to just double check. That didn't matter though. At time 0 0.75 seconds, the object spring earth system, object spring earth system, so everything, has a total kinetic energy K0 and a total potential energy U0. At 1.13 seconds, the object spring system has a total kinetic energy K0 and a potential energy U0. Explain how a feature graph indicates the total kinetic energy of the system is the same as the two times. Ooh, feature of the graph. Um, well, if I'm talking about the kinetic energy, I would be talking about, which times are we talking about? 0.75 is right here. And then 1. Uh, 1.13 seconds is 1.13 is probably right about there. So kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, right? So I want to know about the v. It's one way to think about it. So the most direct way about the kinetic energy is that... Um, the uh, the slopes of the tangent lines, right? The slope of the line tangent to that point is the velocity. So they have the same slopes at that point. I would say at those two points, at those two points, the slope of the tangent line has the same magnitude. It doesn't have to be, it could be positive or negative. Magni, oh, I can't spell. Magnitude, thus has the same speed. And thus the same kinetic energy. Okay, that's what I would talk about. That's the feature of the graph I would focus on on that one there. Now, could you argue it from a spring potential energy point of view? I think it's unlikely in the sense that while you, it is true that energy is conserved in this ideal scenario, in reality, you can't argue that energy is conserved because in all real systems, there could be a loss in energy. So you should probably just focus on the speed for this question. Could you argue it? Would they score you if you argued it from about like maybe the height position? I don't know because part two is to ask you why the total potential energy is the same at those two times. Well, the potential energy here is one half kx squared and um, um, uh, plus the MGH, right? It has, in this case, a vertical mass of spring. It's actually the total energy. This one, I would argue by the total energy being the same, right? So here I would say, because this is really hard to analyze by those two information because they're at different heights, right? So it's really difficult for me to ascertain that this total is gonna be the same because it's different heights here. 
You could attempt to argue it from this equation, but I would say because the total energy is constant by conservation of energy, um, then if the kinetic energy is the same, then the spring potential energy plus the, plus the gravitational potential energy has to be the same also. So the potential, the total potential energy of the system also has to be the same. Um, could you argue it as a displacement from equilibrium? They have the same displacement from equilibrium. I think if you were to do that, you would need to do a little bit of analysis to explain why that's true. Okay, because directly speaking, the displacement from the equilibrium is not enough in terms of principle. I don't know, like maybe they would accept that as an answer. I don't know. I'm not a grader. But if I were, if I were to try to take that line of reasoning from the equilibrium position, I would want to explicitly talk about how the net total of the spring potential energy uh, and gravitational potential energy are the same at those heights because they're clearly different heights. So they clearly have different gravitational potential energy and clearly different spring potential energies. So you have to make an argument why that total is the same at those two points, right? So as long as you made an argument about the total, then that would be okay. The experiment is repeated with the spring constant of spring constant 4k0, and that has the same length as the original spring. The 0.5 kilogram object is hung from the new spring and allowed to come to, okay. So we have a, we've changed the spring constant and it's the same length as the original spring, and we've hung from the new spring, allowed to come to risk at the new equilibrium position. Because of the different spring constant, of course the equilibrium position could be the thing. Determine the new equilibrium position above the motion sensor. Well, so let's find the equilibrium position. We would do that by finding when the net force was zero, right? So we would say the spring force would have to equal mg at equilibrium. That's kx has to equal mg. And so the x is equal to mg over k. That's how, and the x is how much the spring is stretched, by the way. So you've got to be careful about what this is telling you. Okay. So if I replace this with 4k0, then the new position is x over 4. Now let's let's talk about what the length of it. So we need to talk about everything here. Um, so it's k0. The bottom of the hanger is one meters above. Um, let me see. And they're saying, oh, wait, 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 wait. The bottom of the hanger is one meter above the motion detector. So that means the height. Oh, let me think about this. What are these numbers? I, I have to, I have to sort out everything because I want to keep track of exactly the, the distance. The bottom of the hanger is one meter above the motion detector. Why are these heights? So what are these heights? These heights are, what is it measuring? The output is shown in the following page. Okay, the motion detector records the height of the bottom hanger as a function of time. Why? So the equilibrium position is 0.6 meters. So this is when I don't put a mass on. This is the relaxed length, the bottom, okay. A lightweight hanger. Oh, okay, so then we place something on the hanger. All right, so cool. So what we know is when we when we before we it displaced how much did it displace? Well, you know the equilibrium position is 0.6 meters above the ground, right? So here's the equilibrium position originally, right? So that means it stretched 0.4 meters, okay? Because if this height is 0.6 meters, that means the spring to reach the equilibrium position with the original spring constant was 0.4 meters. However, my analysis just showed you that the, the, the equilibrium position would shrink by four. So then the, 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 the new equilibrium position would be point, it would only stretch 0.1 meters compared to that one, right? And so the new height, so that would gain 0.3 meters. So the new height is gonna be 0.9 meters to there, right? Because that, that, that distance there is 0.3. So that distance is 0.6 plus 0.3 or 0.9 meters. All right, I just wanted to be careful there. So the original X was 0 0.4 meters stretch. The X new one is gonna be 0 0.1 meters. And you could do a little diagram like I just kind of did there. I'd say this is one meters. This was the original split. So then the new one is um, right here. And so anyway, the height, what did I say? It would be that this is only 0.1, then it would be gonna be 0.9 meters. That's the, that's the new equilibrium position.
Did I do that right? Did I just, I, I want to make sure I, I don't want to like, this is like really easy to screw up. So I just, yeah, 0. 0.9 meters. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, object is going to pull down the same distance D0 from the equal position released. On the falling draw curve, represent the motion of the object after it's released. Label the vertical axis the appropriate numerical scale and a grid for each. Oh, this is a little, little bit tricky. So the period is clearly going to change. Right? If I'm going to make this four times as much, then what's going to happen is um, it's going to, the period is going to drop by a factor of two. So the period is going to reduce by, what was the period before? The period before was um, 1.25. So 1.25 divided by two, the new period is 0. 0.625. And then we pull it down the same distance D0. So the equilibrium position is 0. 0.9 meters, right? That's what we said there. And then we're pulling it down. How much did we pull it down was about um, five centimeters. Oh, I, I think they, yeah, they did in centimeters. So we got to put this as 90 centimeters. Then we'll make it go down. We'll make this 85 and we'll make that um, 95. So we're going to displace it the same distance. It's going to start at the bottom still, right? Because it's closer. But the period, it's going to repeat. And this is about curve sketching a, a, a sine curve. It's a little tough. Um, not tough, but like, you know, uh, it's going to repeat right here. And um, I do kind of this V pattern. So like halfway between here and here, it's gonna um, it's gonna be like at 95. Uh, so it's 0.625 divided by two is 0.3125. Uh, it's close enough. And then um, halfway between there and there, it's like a dot pattern like this. And then did they on the curve is similar after it's really so I guess like this. Oh, that was terrible. Okay. Okay, and then 0.625 again is at 1.25. 0 0.625 is 0 0.1875. I mean, I'm just gonna do the math. 0 0.125 plus 0 0.625 is 1.875. Be there, and so you know I'm. Oh, man, they just make they just pick bad numbers. Okay, like they're just making me do too many calculations. I'm too lazy to do this kind of thing here. Um, so each of these is what point uh. 0.05, so 0.975 is going to be like right around there, and then halfway between here and here, 1.5625, that's six, something like there, five, five, I don't know, like right around there or something like that. I might, okay. Okay, I got pretty lazy there, okay? I didn't plot all the points. Something like that. Anything else I should be thinking about? I don't want to get caught up with something. I, I made a mistake on the first question. Um, the period changed. Amplitude is based on, they just pulled it to sound the same D0, which was five centimeters. I would double check that, it's five centimeters. Yeah. And the period adjusted four times the spring constant, period cuts in half. Okay, that's that's probably what I would put for that one. I don't think there's anything else I would put.